The scene is Indianapolis Raceway Park, the event, the annual night before the 500, the 15-lap last chance race, one of two we'll have. And here is a look at your starting lineup. Stevie Reeves won just one week ago, but he has to go through the qualifier along with veteran Johnny Parsons in the front row. In the second row, Ted Hines in 25, Steve Barth in 14B. In row three, Tice Carlson in number 41, Robbie Parrish will steer number 22. Row four, Chuck Leary in 31, Mike Bymaster outside in 27. The fifth row will find on the inside, John Murphy, and outside the farmer from Ohio, Mike Mason in row six, Dick St. John out of Wisconsin, and Jeff Howerton in car number 23. The seventh row, Bob Sacconi out of Prospect Park, Pennsylvania, not driving his own car tonight. He's in number 46, Randy Tolsma in number 61. In the eighth row, Dale Ballinger in 6X and Mark Amenda in 4L. And Bill Bowie will round out the field in number 24B. We understand that Johnny Parsons has scratched. He is driving number 11. He will be, we're told, now in the second heat race as we take a look at the white number nine. That is the uh, car that Stevie Reeves drove to the Midget Championship last year. And John Heidenreich will start outside the front row. John Heidenreich in number 92. But Stevie Reeves won here one week ago. A little surprising he's not in the top six qualifiers. Right. But this car 24, Gary, they've been black flagging him for the last couple of laps. That's Dick St. John. They think he's got a loose right rear tire, and they want to bring him in. They don't want to take a chance on him flying down into turn one, having the tire fall off, and perhaps collecting a couple of cars on his way into the fence. Uh, you see that yellow stripe on behind his... Uh, roll cage that indicates that he's a rookie he's a veteran of a lot of races a lot of stock car races figure eights all sorts of things in this area but it's the first year he's really run a midget with USAC so they made him run that stripe but he evidently didn't learn what the black flag meant when he ran all those other series oh here he comes well he's being admonished right now and apparently he does see the black flag and he will come to a halt here at the pit exit or is he going to go on around? No, he's going on around. He's going to go on around and come in. But that they've been giving him that. You can see the right rear wheel wobbling there, the right rear wheel wobbling there. You Something think is you could wrong. feel that, though, at, at lower speed. Well, you, you know, again, he doesn't have a lot of experience. These cars, you feel a lot more in a midget than you ever would in a stock car. Uh, so he probably just might think that's something that might be natural. And uh, he's going to find out. Uh, if it falls off, that it's not real natural. <laughs> let me tell you, we don't want it falling off, right? I know that. I not know at that. any speed, but he heads to the pit area. Bill Carey will hold the furled flag up, and that indicates one more lap, and we will turn them loose. Now, once again, the format for this evening, the fastest six qualifiers in the midget division have been locked in. They will start in inverted order when we get to the 50-lap feature. But these guys qualified seventh through the balance of the field they will have to go through one of two 15 lappers as we take a look at the midget point standings kenny irwin leading the national points by two over stevie reeves andy mitchner is third then tony stewart mike bliss and kenneth nichols who has also won a race on this track it could be a real factor here this evening in fact nichols is the sixth quickest qualifier he will start on the pole position for a 50 lap main event they pick up the throttle off the corner and stevie reeves brings them down and he grabs the lead Stevie Reeves won the drag race in the turn one, but look on the inside. Is that Hines? That's yes. Hines, number 25, and that is a very pleasant surprise. He snuck down on the inside, went right on around Heidenreich, and almost got up beside Reeves before he gathered himself up and uh, took off there. Stevie Reeves leads him down the front straightaway with Hines second. John Heidenreich is third, and it looks like Barth is now in fourth position in number 14. Yeah, Barth's running very well. This is about the best I've seen Barth run out here. He runs pretty good on the short tracks, but uh, hasn't run quite this good on the long tracks. But he looks real competitive. But again, you said earlier, confidence. These guys are starting to get confidence in the race car and themselves. Then they go quicker. Well, it takes laps. You know, it's like we talked about the F2 guys. The reason they don't run up as high, the reason they don't try the things, is they don't have the confidence. It just takes laps. After they run a 50 lap feature race here, they'll have as much confidence as these pitcher drivers do. Barth made a big sweep coming off that corner and got very low off turn two and lost some ground to Heidenreich. But look at this battle for the lead. Boy, Heidi Hines having a lot of horsepower there. He's car 25, and he is right on the heels of Stevie Reeves. He was tucked right up under him. He's trying to figure out a way right now. He can't figure out a way to get around him. He's tried a little bit high. He's tried a little bit low, but Reeves is running awfully, awfully fast. It's going to be very, very difficult for him to outbox Stevie Reeves, I think. The top nine will transfer. The top nine will transfer from each of the two qualifiers. If we look at the first two right now. Reeves 
seems to be working a little harder right now than Hines does. You can see his arms moving around here. Look at Barth. He's caught back up with Heidreich. He got way behind. Now he's caught back up. He's going to give him a try on the well, inside. He saw a slower car down there, Larry, and had to back out the throttle just a bit and move up to get on the racetrack. Well, that was good, uh, good thinking. If you look at Barth's car on a straightaway shot like we just saw, how, you can tell how far offset these race cars are. They build them for pavement, and they're way offset from the left-hand side. John Heidreich comes in from the East Coast to race here in the Midwest. Teddy Hines running in second position. And, of course, he's a second-generation driver. His dad, Jim, has been racing for years. His brother has also won three straight USAC Speed Road Championships out on the east side of Indianapolis. But Teddy Hines is almost unbeatable. Here he goes. He's going to give shot down on the inside. He's way past him. Went right on by. An excellent move. He stepped behind him. He rode behind him for six laps. Watch what he was doing. Look at Stevie Reeves, though. He's pulled way to the inside. Something's wrong with Stevie Something Reeves. Something is wrong with that gurney powered beast, and he is well off the pace, about to be passed for second, and then third, fourth, and fifth. Now, remember, nine will transfer, and there is no what we call semi. If he doesn't place in the not top nine here, there you can see he's down off the pace and he's headed for the pit area. Yeah, it looks like for the first time in a long time, Stevie Reeves is going to miss the main event because he gets no second chance tonight. He uh, didn't qualify fast enough and he doesn't make it this race. It's all over. Well, Ted Hines trailer. has shown his capability on the short tracks, but with the uh, lower power like Volkswagen power plant, the boys doing a great job of that as we take a look at second, third, fourth, and fifth right together on the racetrack. And it's Hyde Rock in the purple and white. Whoa, Barth wiggled just a bit. That's Tice Carlson in the 41 car that's down on the inside of Barth. Now, he's lifting that left front wheel. He's really got a lot of weight jacked in that thing. It's unsettling to the race car when you lift the left front as much as he is. It makes the car wiggle around. Here you can see when that left front tire settled down, it made the back end wiggle on that 41 car. Tommy Parrish in the white 22. Chuck Lear in the black 31. Look at him. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Right oh. together the racetrack, and they are together, literally. Uh -oh. And upside down is Robbie Parrish. Two other drivers to the inside to avoid them. We saw Mike Mason in the red 7 go by on the inside. Side. Uh, you call that what, your Tommy tip over? That, that was about as close to a Tommy tip over as you can get on a fast racetrack like this. Uh, he just had no place to go. When Tice Carlson got together with that other car and spun, uh, he he kind of panicked, put on the brakes, and got into it too. Robbie Parrish uh, was kind of an unfortunate uh, bystander there that got all cut up on it all. And I'll tell you what, the other four or five guys who were running behind him did one heck of a job to stay out of that crash because they could have... So it could have been several of them that collected him real, real easy. Well, also keep in mind that we talk about drivers driving down the racetrack and not over the nose of the race car. There's an example, Larry, where had those drivers been looking over the nose of that race car, they would have been involved as well. Let's take a look now through turn four. Okay, Tyce Carlson just comes down on the inside of Barth here. He tries real hard to get low. Barth, at the same time, tries to come, come under Heidenreich, who's got his arm up in the air. He had trouble, so he slowed. When Barth went down, he hit Carlson, and then Parrish just comes along. He gets on that soft left rear tire, and about the time he does, the 41 car of Carlson backs up into him and just kind of tipped him over. Look at the moves behind him, though. Look at Mason and that black car. Both of them did a great job. They're almost clear down on the inside fence to miss him. Here we see it again from a different angle. Look at this. Barth just moves down. He was trying to miss Heidenreich, who had slowed suddenly. And as he came around, Parrish collected him, hits him, and this is where he kind of tipped over when he ran into the other wheel. But look at the two guys who did a great job. Boy. Mike Mason almost caught him. He did a great job to miss that. Look at Heidenreich has parked his car in turn two. He was the one that raised his hand, indicating there was a mechanical problem. And that started the melee along the front straightaway. A good shot of it right there from above the uh, starter stand. We're coming back with more. Stay with us. Weeby Blimpin' with the Family Channel here during the month of May. They've stopped in for the Indy 500. Hey, if your job is to attend festivals and sporting events, where better to be than Indy in the month of May? Hey, man, you're doing a great job up there. We appreciate all those great shots. This, of course, is the racy place to be. Speed Week with host Bob Jenkins. Call in and talk to the Indy 500 winner live on Monday, and it's only on ESPN. And, of course, uh, we've got all the motorheads here tonight, the Thunderheads, as we love to call them. But the... Uh, 
IMSA fans are going to be tuned in on Monday for the Lime Rock Fun starting at 1.30 in the afternoon. That's 10.30 in the morning out on the West Coast. Just a couple of quick notes. Robbie Parrish stayed in his race car and is out there preparing for the restart. He had a new baby on Thursday. They call him Robbie Jr. Dad's having an exciting postnatal experience here this evening. And we tried to get Stevie Reeves over to talk about what went on. And he said, I'm staying in the car. We're trying to get it fixed. Let's get back to action with Gary and Larry. Yeah, and both 41 and 22 have restarted as the green flag is flying. Nine laps complete, six laps to go. And your leader once again is Ted Hines, the black 25 car. But Steve Barth is able to continue on after that break. Oh, oh problem in turn one. And That's that scary. is Leary. Chuck Leary at a Greenfield, Indiana, goes all the way around. I'll tell you, had he got on that grass down there, he'd have gone over. Well, everybody was very lucky that he slid way down towards the inside. Uh, when that happened, he uh, he got really out of the way, went clear around right down to the bottom of the racetrack, and everybody got around him fairly easily on the outside. Except well, I'm not sure if he went down there on purpose or he went along for the ride. Well, I think most of the times <laughs> when you have something like that happen, you're just kind of along for the ride. You hear all kinds of people saying, geez, he did a great job saving a lot of stuff. I would tell you, I don't think I saved one of my life. It just happened that way. All right, let's take a look again. The third car back, the black 31 is Chuck Leary. Okay, we're looking at the first two cars right now, and we see him come into a picture right here. He just entered the corner way too hard. The back end started around, and he couldn't get it woven fast enough. It just went on, went on, went on. He almost got it saved right there. You see, he did spin for around, but when he got down in the grass, it did a reverse spin the other way. He was very, very close to staying that thing or keeping that thing from going around, but once he did that reverse flip or for reverse spin then it hit that grass and went on around and killed the engine All right, once again we have one more lap before we go green only nine laps have been complete six laps to go and uh, let us say hey to uh, our chief pilot of our family channel airship alan burrows maybe we can get a ride with alan sometime uh, rice aroni ted hines leads it but a Barth and mason howerton uh, a young driver's third generation driver and mike bymaster that's right. Mike Bymaster, also a pretty young guy that's uh, doing a pretty good job right here tonight. Everybody comes out to race the night before the 500. This is one of the four biggies, as you mentioned earlier, and the green flag flies on lap number 10. Barth and Mike Mason both look real racy all of a sudden. Mike Mason, after missing that accident, seems to want to get up in there, but uh, seems like Barth and Hines pull away from him just a little bit. There he look back there. There's the 41 car that was involved in the accident before, but he is back underway. Three abreast coming off here, not quite. That's Parrish down on the inside. Tyus Carlson was trying to get under him. That's back there for the transfer spot. Only nine will transfer. There he's on his way again, but he's uh, pretty far behind the pack. Looks like the transfer spot right now belongs to car number 41, Tyce Carlson. So Carlson was involved in that melee earlier on the main straightaway, and he's running the ninth and final transfer position. Now, you know, they don't have fears on these cars, so he has no idea how close the guy is behind him or who it is that's behind him. Look at Parrish once again down the inside of Tolkien. Look at him working that steering wheel, Larry. Oh, he's working real hard. When you get down that low on the racetrack, you have to work real hard because there's not the banking to hold you. The 22 car Parrish went on around to him, and now that he's working on the Ciccone and the 46 car, the orange 46 car, Ciccone seems to be having a little trouble with that car, too. Well, Ciccone is driving the car that in the past has been driven by Russ Gamester, but Russ now has a commitment with wins to run the ASA series for the Mac McClellan owned team, and Mac said, uh-uh, you're not driving those digits when you're driving the stock car. No, they've, they've kind of got some restrictions, and you can't blame them. They're putting a lot of money out towards that series, and they want him to do well in it. But here we see Tyus Carlson in the 41 car. He's just gone around the 61 car at home. Now he's going to go after Ciccone in the 46 car. And look at Chuck Leary in the black 31. He's trying to get back a transfer position. Yes, he's still on the same lap, so if he gets back around a couple of guys, he could make this feature race, even though he's fun. Look at that pack goes into the corner. There's the white flag for your two leaders. Teddy Hines out in front of the black 25. Barnes runs in second. Boy, this is quite a battle back here for, for what, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth, or something like that. Boy, boy, look at Barth. He's on the inside. Now he can't make it stick. Hines has got this thing uh, pretty well handled right now. Oh, problem in turn three, a problem in turn three. The battle for that final transfer position, and there's the checkered flag, and it was Leary again. Leary got in trouble. He was going for the transfer spot. Looked like he had a shot at it and got tangled up with another car over there in the third turn, but he continues on back to the pit area. 
That's why they put those little yellow flags on there to tell you which ones the rookies are, and uh, when they get in trouble, you, you just have to take into consideration. Three-time USAC Speed Roam champion Ted Hines goes to the big track and picks up a victory. Now, here it is. There is number 31, Leary, to the inside. He's going by Tolsma, I believe, in car 61. And now he tries to get under Tyson, and right there he collects Bob Saccone. He just, actually didn't hit him. I think he just climbed on the brakes. Yeah, he did actually control. did a, a heck of a job to miss Bob Saccone. He went in there real hard. He was going to gain two or three spots here. He had a shot at getting around three different cars, but when he caught Saccone, Saccone was going real slow. He had to get on the binders to miss him. Resulted in a spin. All right, so there your victory goes to Teddy Hines. We're coming back with more from Indianapolis Raceway Park. There is the overhead view from the Family Channel blimp, and here are the results that show Ted Hines winning this one over Steve Barth, Mike Mason, Jeff Howerton, and Robbie Parrish, who got upside down and came back to finish fifth. By Master Sacconi, Carlson, Tolsma, and Murphy round out the top ten. There's some thunderheads tuned in tonight, checking all the action live here at the racetrack, and the best story of all is the man who could not find his way to victory lane. Ted Hines has never won a heat race here and didn't know where to come for the interview. Congratulations. That was a great run. Thank you very much. This is a new team we're running for here, and I'm just getting this is a real good race car, so I've just been trying to get myself used to it and get my build up to the race car. So we're getting better every night. We ran it last week and ran ninth, so hopefully we'll make a good showing tonight with it. I got to ask you if you could have gotten around the national champion Reeves had he not broken there. I think we probably could have because I was running in real deep on him. I could really catch him going in, and uh, mainly I was wanting to just stay there with him because. It didn't. It, we made the show at top nine there, and he was showing me a real good line around the racetrack. So I was just going to stay there with him. Then his missed out down the back stretch, so we had to jump around him real quick. But so I guess we were pulling away from him pretty good. So that made me feel good. Congratulations on the win. Good luck in the feature. Check out that onboard camera. Let's go topside for the second qualifier. Now you're looking out the back of Johnny Parsons' car. He will start outside the front row alongside Danny Drynan, 33 and 11. In the second row, Kenny Irwin. As you take a look off to the right there, the seven car and Terry Goff in 95 direct behind Parsons. Third row, Mel Kenyon, Andy Michener. In row four, Mel Kenyon, uh, Paige Jones, that is, and Jack Runyon. In the fifth row, Jeff Sands and Mike Hurst. Row six, we'll find Andy Pierce and Chris Malone. In the seventh row, Perry Ounce and Randy Cook. In the eighth row, Pat Bliss and Ronnie John Cox. Brian Sievers alone in row nine. Now, a couple drivers had to have a push start. They go to the back of the pack, 83 and 99. As we're about to go green, we look right there at the golf car number 95, and there is the green flag, a drag race down the front straightaway, now riding over the cage of Johnny Parsons. You look back now as Parsons rides in second position. Dan Dwayne out in front. Kenny Irwin rides in third. And Parsons has pulled out a pretty good lead over uh, Ken Irwin, as we can see right now. Ken Irwin in the seven car is uh, falling back uh, several car lengths off at a very, very quick start for both Dryden and that Parsons. Yeah, Dryden out in front, Parsons right second, then it's Irwin, and then it's Terry Goff in the 95 car, and then it's Andy Michener in number six. Parsons is hanging right with Danny Dreiner. Uh-oh, Dreiner pulled way down to the inside. I think he got a little loose. And just to keep the car straight and keep the momentum, he drove it down a little bit low on the racetrack. There is a look at the fast groove. Compliments of Johnny Parsons. Yeah, Parsons. Oh, a car up against the fence coming off the corner. Wow. I'll tell you what, he went from that was side. That was Mel Kenyon, the seven-time national champion, actually brushed the wall, white wall, the tires coming off turn four. That's Jeff Sands in that 62 car trying to get underneath him, but he couldn't quite he could do it, even though uh, Mel got slowed down a little bit. He has to pull back up behind him in line there. That's Yowes in the 51 car as they come uh, about single file off the corner. Now remember, only nine will transfer as we ride now with Andy Mixner. Watch Andy work that steering wheel coming off the corner down the backstretch. He's tucked in behind the 95 Bobbley car and Terry Goff. Let's Watch take a ride. Watch him going through the corner now. He's just, look how steady he holds that right hand. The steadier you hold your right hand, the better the race car is working. If you really see him sawing that wheel back and forth, it's not working. Right now, he's just putting that hand right up top there. He's got a little bit of a push. Oops, right there, got a little loose. We jerks that hand back down, it's a little loose. Now it's back up there, nice little push, straight down the straightaway again. Looks like he's working pretty good. I don't think he's too unhappy with that race car right now. He's riding in fifth position as we take a lap with Terry, or with Andy Mixter, looking at the back of Terry Goff. He doesn't seem to be able to do anything with Terry Goff. He's not really gaining on him, and he's just riding there. But look at this. Kenny Irwin has caught our front two leaders. Kenny Irwin, it was way back. He's now caught Johnny Parsons in that 11 car, and it looks like he might have designs on trying to go around him. 
Kenny Irwin by two points right now leading the national point standings over Stevie Rees. We go back with the Michener in the six car, and there is the battle right there for position. Look how close they are. Well, i tell you what, it looks like it's handled a lot better from inside the car than it does from outside the car. Because when he came off the hook, right there, he's you saw He's having it. trouble coming off the second corner. Right, it looks like it's had a push, and then all of a sudden the back end snaps loose on him, and he has to give it that little correction and really do it quick before he spins the thing. For a driver, it's very disconcerting. If a car has one particular idiosyncrasy, you work with But if a car goes from loose to pushing or back and forth, it's very disconcerting. Right, we're halfway through this race, Gary. And look at Parsons. He and Dryden again have pulled away from Kenny Irwin. I don't know what happened, with, but Kenny caught up with him. He, he went back, then he caught up with him again. He doesn't well, seem to be consistent. Well, he may have abused the tires or heated the tires up as he caught up, and he couldn't work with him once he got up to him. Well, very possibly could have, but he doesn't seem to be very consistent. Johnny Parsons, the veteran from Speedway, Indiana, would love to be preparing for the Indy 500 tomorrow, but obviously he did not make the field this year, so he's here driving a midget tonight. Parsons in this Johnny White built car has been very, very consistent all year long. Johnny White built this car. His father was a, a one-time uh, great sprint car driver, and he just got inducted into the little 500 Hall of Fame last week. Well, you mean Jimmy White Jimmy built it. His dad sorry, was Johnny. Sorry. Yeah, that's a Vogler power plant, too, that uh, Parsons is utilizing. He's chasing down a car built by Dryden, powered by a Gertie. Oh, what a great, what a great shot from inside the cockpit. Just barely lifts that left front as he works off the fourth corner. We had a speed trap last summer on this race car, and it, that Vogler engine had the fastest straightaway speed of anybody here uh, last summer. So uh, I think he's got plenty of horsepower, but he just doesn't seem to be able to handle Drynan tonight. Drynan's Working now on lap 11 of a 15-lap qualifier. The top nine will transfer back inside the red, white, and blue helmet there. Johnny Parsons has used that helmet paint scheme for years and years and years on pavement. He has a, what he calls a getting dirty helmet for dirt. Also in this race, back in the packaways, Paige Jones, who came in from uh, California to race, and of course, uh, his, his old man Parnelli is going to be one of our uh, featured individuals in the Fast Masters coming up uh, in a few weeks. Well, he's running about sixth right now, Gary, and he's doing a good job. He's going to make the feature race, but I'm sure he and Larry Howard are going to work on that race car a little bit more so they go a little faster come feature time. We can't leave this race up front. Parsons is trying everything right now to get the lead. He'd like to move up one more spot, spot because if he moves up another spot, it's just somebody he doesn't have to pass in that feature race. But look at Irwin. Where did Irwin come from? See, this that's is what twice I mean. he's done this. That's what I mean. He's been very inconsistent. He's real, real fast, and then he slows up. I don't know whether he's uh, messing with his weight jacker and, and got himself dialed out. But look now, right now, he's going to give Parsons a try. Nope, can't do it. Got to fall back. Yeah, he may have cooled the tires off a bit, and then he makes a run in him. Heats the tires up and can't work once he's caught up with. There's the white flag, one lap. Okay, does he have something left? Well, Parsons is going to try right there. And here we see Andy Mitchell. He's right, he too, down on the bottom side. He's going to go up with Terry Gruff. Oh, he pulled his pass off. Yeah, he moves to fourth position. Goff drops to fifth. There's your battle for your lead. Danny running the white 33. Parsons the red 11. And the red and black number seven is Irwin. Irwin looks to the inside of Parsons. Parsons, I thought he was going to try on the outside, but he didn't quite have enough oh, momentum to so get up there. Drynan takes the heat ray. Oh, a car in the wall as the checkered flag. Ball. And that is Mel Kenyon, the seven-time national champion, Mr. Midget from Lebanon, Indiana. Oh, what a break. Is Mel okay? He's, uh, looks like he may be taking uh, the steering wheel off, or he may need some medical attention. Uh, he's moving around in there. He just set his visor up. I think he's okay, but... I think he's collecting his thoughts right now and cleaning the cobwebs out because he took a nasty lick. You can see the damage to the left front. The axle is skew there, and uh, well, I tell you what, the past couple of years have had he's had some terrible accidents, some really hard hits. Let's see if we can see what happens. Left rear, right rear, goes into the into the corner. Look, three guys, two guys, one guy went around him going in. He just got loose. Something, I think something happened to the race car. He took a real hard hit on the left side of that race car. Mel Kenyon does not drive a race car in there and just spin it in front of everybody like that. And especially when you see three cars, the red car goes around him, two more go around him. He's got a problem. Something goes wrong with that race car. Look right there. It, it turned to the right, and then he jerked it back to the left. That's the reason the car spun. Something broke on that race car it caused him to get in the fence. Well, we will not have the seven-time champion, the man that's won the most races here on this particular track, in our feature this evening.
Saturday Night Thunder. Check them out. Thunderheads come to Indianapolis Raceway Park. They come to see the heroes, and one of their heroes is down here. Oh, look at her. Isn't she a sweetheart? I'll bet she's a Stevie Reeves fan. This guy's out of a ride tonight. What happened in the heat race? Steve Reeves, the national champion, looking for a ride, I hear. Well, we were going down the back stretch, and the mag let go, and, you know, we tried to stay out and tried to make another lap, see if it was just fuel or something, but couldn't make any more. The car shut off again, going down the back stretch again, and so now we're searching for a ride. That performance racing beast, Gertie, was right in there tonight, so we're going to try and find another beast car to hop in and, you know, see what happens. All these guys want to win your championship. Is anybody going to let you sit in their seat tonight? Well, I'll tell you what, we missed the first race of the year, and I had two firsts and a third so far this year, and I was within two points, and this is going to hurt us again, so we've come from behind before, so we'll, we're not giving up. All right, we'll wish you good luck on your shopping tour, and we'll take a moment to move across here and talk to the big, tall guy who has just won the second of our qualifying races, and for Dan Drynan, it's a double victory. His is a driver, certainly, but the first for a brand-new race car. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. Uh, very glad to see the car perform the way it's doing so far. Um, we got some bugs to work out yet, but we're pretty happy with it. Is this a concept that you dreamed up while you were in the uh, influence of all those painkillers in the hospital in Springfield? You had a terrible, terrible time with really serious injuries. It's, first of all, it's great to see you back, but where did the idea for the new car come from? Well, basically, last year we ran a conventional car. We were trying to market something that worked on the, both the dirt and the pavement, and it didn't quite keep up with Coletus. Um, they gave me the incentive. I had a lot of time laying on my back to think of a lot of things uh, engineering-wise that I learned from the Indy cars. We put it to work here, and I uh, to go with that, we came up with a new body style because the midgets are lacking in marketability. There's no place on the cars for advertising for the sponsors. That's what makes it all happen. So we got um, panels on the side now. Makes it a little sleeker and a place to put the sponsors. That's perfect. He's an engineer. He's a driver. He's the marketing expert. He's the winner. We congratulate you on that. Want to take a quick look at some of the other things happening around Indianapolis. Steve Butler wins it last night at the A.J. Foyt race over on the Mile Oval. Silver Crown Division. Schumann, Gurney, Stewart, and Stevie Reeves, whom you just met rounding out the top five and the sprints ran at Winchester Jim Keeker threw a little ballast in the car which was disqualified here a week ago because it was too light Keeker wins it over Gordon Stanley Butler and Mahoney Butler's taking half the money out of Indiana here tonight congratulations to Steve on a couple of great rides the Thunderheads continue to gather in anticipation of tonight's main events we'll be right back The midgets are on the track. We are ready for the annual night before the 500 in row one. Remember, the top six qualifiers inverted, so Kenneth Nichols will start from inside the front row alongside Jimmy Sills in row two. Jim Hettinger in a Volkswagen against Tony Stewart. And in row three, your fastest qualifiers, Ryan Gerster in 21, Mike Bliss in 6P. In the fourth row, Teddy Hines in 25, Dan Drynan in 33. Row five will have Steve Barth and Johnny Parsons. In the sixth row, Mike Mason and Kenny Irwin, a pair of sevens. Row seven, Jeff Howerton and Andy Michener. The eighth row will have Robbie Parrish and Terry Goff. We move to row nine now, Mike Bymaster and Paige Jones. In the tenth row, Bob Ciccone, Jack Runyon. Row 11, Tice Carlson and Mike Hurst. And the last row, in number 12, Randy Tulsman and Perry Yons. Well, we're very concerned about the well-being of those two drivers that were injured earlier. Let's check in once again with Dave Despain. He has some more information. Before we get underway with the midget feature quickly, I hate interviewing doctors. I don't think Jim will take that personally. Dr. Jim Nossett is the medical director here at the Speedway. And given the crash that we both saw, you have a fairly optimistic report. What can you tell me? That's right. Both drivers are uh, less injured than, than what the crash would seem. Jarrett Schrader has injuries to both feet and ankles on both sides. He's en route to Methodist Hospital now for x-rays uh, for possible fractures. And uh, Greg Tracy has an injury to his face, which appears to be a minor bruise, as well as an injury to his foot. He's also en route for x-rays. And he, both drivers are awake and alert. Excellent news, and we're certainly happy. We appreciate your taking time out of a busy schedule to come and report that the guys involved in a horrendous-looking crash are going to be okay. Let's go back for the green flag to Gary and Larry. And with that announcement, there is a collected sigh of relief. Just incredible, Larry. Yeah, incredible isn't the word for it. That was probably the hardest hit I've seen at this racetrack for a long, long time. But it came off okay, and it's amazing to me. Kenny Irwin, by a couple of points, leading the national point standings. You saw his record so far this season. He will be uh, someone to contend with. And we're talking about the engines. We have eight different engines in the first 10 starters. We There's sure a look do. at Danny Drynan in the white number 33, a car of uh, his own design, utilizing the Gertie power plant. 
You can see that body panel on the left side that he's talking about to help get more advertising on the race car. Some of the uh, other competitors don't think it's quite as much a body panel as it might be a air a spoiler device. Uh -huh. yeah. but, uh, he calls it what he wants and they call it what they want. I this guess. is why I had to stop driving midgets. I can never figure out where to go on this four abreast parade. <laughs> I tell you what, you're not the only one. This Johnny We're looking Parsons taking us a ride now. We're looking over the shoulder of Johnny Parsons down under the hood of that Vogler engine car, and uh, he's going to take us for a good ride. He runs fast here. He's been fast for the last year in that race car, and I think he's going to do well here tonight, too. He has won something like seven features on this racetrack, six in midgets, and, of course, the Silver Crown race that we televised a couple of years ago. A very versatile driver, and he is going to give us the ride with the CarQuest cage cam. Andy Mitchner will have the other camera mounted on his car. He'll be driving the white number uh, six, and he will also uh, be giving us some excellent shots from inside that race car as well. And there's a look at the youngster from Michigan. The blue box. Andy Mitchner. Blue boxes on the side to carry all the apparatus that makes that camera work. And of course, the camera high on the left side there, overlooking the left front corner and, uh, of the race car. Andy Mitchner going to take us for a ride, too. Once again, a 50-lap feature. The first six from qualifying are inverted, so your fastest qualifier, Mike Bliss, will be starting outside in the uh, Potter V6, outside the third row. He's the quick qualifier. Yeah, we understand that Ralph Potter's in the hospital. We want to uh, say uh, Godspeed to him, wish him well. Uh, we don't know exactly how badly sick he is, but uh, if he's able, we know he's watched tonight, and we certainly want to wish him and his family well and hope he gets out of that place soon. We should have the green flag this time by. There it is, the annual night before the 500 underway. And Jimmy Sills and the Dave Calder with car out in front. That's the black and uh, flame number four. Well, we had some uh, pretty heavy bumping going on back up that straightaway. Some of the cars were uh, really shooting for small holes and made a little contact, but they all made it down into turn one. Okay. They always tell them in the driver's meeting you can't win on the first lap. Everybody tries to do it as we ride with Johnny Parsons. Yeah, nobody believes that. Everybody wants to get every advantage they can. Parsons we see running through here. Here we're looking out the back. That's Andy Mister's car we're looking at right behind him. One camera car looking at the other camera car. How about that? That's Andy Mister. You can see Andy enters the corner. He's following Johnny's line almost exactly. He's right on his bumper. Head right there. Oh, look at Bliss. He's a little bit loose right there as he goes down underneath. Wow, he was a whole lot loose right there. But Bliss is running second. And Tony Stewart running third right now. And a man who has won earlier this season in fourth position is Ken Nichols. Here we're looking at Parsons. We're looking out of the front of Parsons' car. And that's Mitchell in that white number six car that just gave him a try on the inside. He couldn't pull it off, though. And he had to pull up right behind him. That black car there is Teddy Hines. He's going to try now. He's going to try to go under Mitchell in that black 25 car. And eighth, ninth, and tenth. Barth is 11th. Well, they're trying each other. Oh, look at this. Parsons moved down just a little bit, just as Mitchell started down there. Now Barth's going to try all three of them. He also can't make a stick and has to pull back up a lot. Parsons may be holding the freight train up right now. They may be quicker. Oh, look at this shot right here from Andy Mitchell looking off to the right to Parsons, and he's going to go on by Parsons. Very close, very close. But he did go right on by. Look back at the leader. in front of the pack. Look at Mike Bliss. He just gave a big shot past Jimmy Sills down into that corner, and boy, was he flying. As I said once a couple of years ago, he went in there a million miles an hour. Riding along once again, looking back from the front of Andy Mitchner's car. And look at Parsons dirt tracking in the corner. Well, that's Parsons' problem. That's the reason he's not running fast. He's running too far sideways. When you're running that far sideways, the car's loose. You just can't get on the throttle quick enough to get you out of the corner. Right there he is again. See that back end wiggle out? You can't chase the throttle. You can't put your foot on the throttle when that back end's hanging out like that. Back to the front of the pack, and there is the Potter V6 with Mike Bliss. He's in from Milwaukee, Oregon. Sills is second. Stewart is riding in third. We have now completed six laps of the 50-lap night before the 500 USAC Midget feature from Indianapolis Raceway Park. Hey, back at Raceway Park with a big wave from a guy we're glad to see here, Pepe Marchese, who had a serious head injury at the Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio, last fall during the Four Crown Nationals. He's here enjoying it and said, hey, I'm going to come back, guys. As soon as I'm back on my feet, I'm going to run a sprint car again. It's great to see him. Great to see him. Well, the parade comes off the fourth corner. 
Bliss is still out in front. Mike Bliss, who won the Car Owners Championship for the Potter family last year. We have five beast chassis running one through five, but four different power plants being employed. That's right. Jimmy, they're, they're all running fast. All four or five of these engines up front. Oh, one just about as fast as the other. It's amazing that they can regulate five different types of engines and make them this equal. It just amazes me when I think about it. Bliss is out in front. Jimmy Sills rides in second in the black. Well, that's actually a, a four on a blue tail, and then the all-blue Crystal Pepsi car running third with Tony Stewart. That thing's got more colors than a box of Lifesavers, man. It's got every color in the rainbow on it. It's, it's black, and it's blue, and it's yellow. Uh, here's fifth place. Or... Here's fifth place. Andy Mixter, and right up front's the ALA-1 car, that green and white car of Kenneth Nichols. Now, Kenneth won earlier this season here at Raceway Park. We look back at Ted Hines in the black 25 and on back to, I think that was the seven car. Yeah, the seven car of Kenny Irwin. Those first seven cars run a nose to tail around the racetrack as Teddy Hines tries to get around Mitchell. That's him back there in about fifth or sixth place on the inside of Mitchell going to get across the starting line. He has to pull back up in line at number one. It seems like it's easier for the guys to pass in three and four than it is in one and two because three and four is a little bit flatter. You don't have to run right up against the fence. You can run a little bit lower through three and four and still get through there. And it makes it a little bit easier to get a, a run on a guy coming off the corner. 18 laps now complete of a 50-lap feature here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. An excellent crowd on hand, as always, for the night before the 500. There is a look at uh, the ALA-1 car doing battle. That is Kenneth Nichols looking to the inside of Tony Stewart. They're both working very, very hard. You can see them both working the wheel. Here we can see Andy Mitchell. He's working the wheels. He's right behind that ALA-1 car of Kenneth Nichols coming off of turn four. But right now, it looks like Bliss may have them covered. We go back and ride with the CarQuest cage cam mounted up tonight to Andy Mitchner's car and a great shot once again from the Family Channel airship. I'd like to have this shot about every night we're out here at Raceway Park. Hey, man, this makes us one of the big boys. A big shot from the blimp, man. I like this. I this does the gap between first and second about the same as between second and third, but third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Here comes... Barth, Steve Barth is back there in eighth, and he's closing in. Yeah, Kenneth Nichols is going to see if he can get down under him. He goes in real hard. He cannot get around him. Yep, there he does. He, it, just as they got in the middle of the corner, Stewart had to get out of the throttle a little bit and allowed Kenneth Nichols going around. So a Fontana power plant motors by the Scat 4. That's right. We've got we got five or six different engines right up here in front of this race. We've got 21 laps down now. It's going to be, oh, it looks, it looks like Tony Stewart's having a little trouble. Did you see how quickly they gained on him at the end of the straightaway? In the middle of the corner, he ran pretty fast. But it looked like down the straightaway, down the end of the straightaway, he's losing a little speed. We mentioned strategy during the uh, 2000 race. What about the strategy right here? Well, strategy is even more important than these than it is in the Formula 2000 race, I think, because the tires play such an important part in the midget race. This is the longest midget race that they run here at this racetrack, and they have to get that thing set up, and they have to make sure that it runs fast, but it runs the full 50 laps. You were talking about Tony Stewart, maybe with some problems. That car was rebuilt after he crashed it in a race here one week ago, so there may be some uh, mechanical problems with the race car. There is fifth, sixth, and seventh. Mitchner, Hines, and Kenny Irwin. Irwin all over the back of Hines trying to make a pass. Now look at this, trying right down on the inside. Man, oh man, was that close? And he did it. He got around him. That was Kenneth Nichols. Kenneth Nichols is the fastest race car on the racetrack right now. He's moved from fourth to second here in about a period of three or four different laps. And Mike Bliss better get his walking shoes on because he's coming in. He has a half of the race to overhaul Bliss because 25 laps are now complete as Bliss brings him off the fourth corner and down the front straightaway and closing in the ALA one car of Kenneth Nichols. And that was the sixth car of Andy Mitchell that went around Tony Stewart there just a minute ago. We're right with Andy Mitchell right now as he's closing in. Well, Jimmy Sills in the other four car. Sills, the veteran from Placerville, California, in to run the USAC Silver Crown race at the Indiana State Fairgrounds last night. In fact, he had the lead about halfway through until he tangled with the car that he was trying to lap. Okay, and it looks like they're all beginning to close in on Bliss. I think maybe they are. You know, the tires play such an important part. Some of these guys might have just been running real straight, saving their tires, not wanting to abuse them. And now that they've got about halfway, 
some of the other guys up front might have used their tires a little harder and have them too hot might be slowing up just a little bit. Well, of course, Stevie Reeves, who's in the thick of the battle for the points, failed to make the feature. He was looking, as he told us earlier, for a beast chassis to run, and, and nobody would give up their ride because they wanted to run the night before the 500. Well, it's difficult in a race like this. It's such an important race. Such So much prestige goes along with this race, to say nothing of the money, that hardly anybody's going to give up their ride, especially this early in the season. Kenny Irwin is your points leader, but Andy Mitchell also in the hunt, as well as Tony Stewart, Mike Bliss. Right there he is, Gary. There he goes. He's caught up with Mike Bliss. I think Kenneth Nichols has run a marvelous race. He, he stayed back there, fourth, fifth, sixth position, didn't use his tires up, but when everybody else just slowed a tad, but right, right there, he got a little sideways. If he yeah, does running that off the right rear that way. Right. If he does that very often, he'll heat that right rear, his tire up, or car up, and then he'll be slowing down, too. As you see right now, all of a sudden, he's dropped two or three car legs back and doesn't seem to be catching. Well, Mike Bliss and Kenneth Nichols battling for the leader also tied for fifth place in the point standings. Now, as he heats up that tire, if he, if he lays off just a bit, I would assume he could cool that tire off a little bit and have another shot at him. So the battle continues as we have completed now 28 laps working on lap 29 in the night before the 500. And some of these guys are slotting around like they're skating on ice tonight. That's right. You can see that uh, Jimmy Stills right in that number four car, that red, white, black, blue, orange, whatever it is <laughs> car there, really has picked up on the <laughs> number eight car of Kenneth Nichols. He's picked up one, and Nichols at the same time has started to lose a little ground on Mike Bliss. But it all looks to me like every car up there in that front uh, group has used their tires very hard, and they're all getting a little loose. So it's going to be the guy who has saved his tires and has been the most patient that might win this race. Well, the straight is coming off the corner and appears to be your leader. Well, obviously, when you're in the lead, you can run a little straighter. Whoops, Kenneth Nichols didn't. I mean, Kenneth, Kenny Irwin didn't run too straight right there. He almost got into it. But uh, when you're running in the front, you don't have to take as many chances. You can run the race car a lot straighter. You don't have to try to pass guys. Remember, Kenneth Nichols had to come up through four or five guys to get into second place. Jimmy Smith has been running real hard to try to keep those guys behind him. Bliss has been really kind of coasting up there trying to save that. Oh, look at this. Bliss very sideways here in that blue car, and here comes the ALA-1 car of Kenneth Nichols. In fact, that car used to be a Stan Fox car, the old white number nine, before this, uh, the Nowicki team bought it. They've had a lot of success with this car. Won several races already this season. He's trying to win one more tonight. Mike Bliss is very, very loose with his car right now. I think this uh, Nichols is also loose, but he's just not quite as loose as Bliss is. So, so is this race going to go to Jimmy Sills? Well, I think it very much. Look at the yellow car back there. He had to make a pit stop. He went clear to last place and had to turn that Volkswagen power car. He's up to about fifth spot now, so sixth spot. So this could be a real shootout with uh, 12 laps to go. And you're trying to go by on the low side of Stewart. That's pretty impressive with that Volkswagen. The Autocraft Volkswagen losing uh, a little horsepower, really, over these uh, the Pontiacs, the Montanas, and the uh, the Gerties. Well, they tried to help him this year. They give him a few more Kimmy Ginches so they can try to help him get a little more horsepower. He's always been fast here with that Volkswagen. We'll have 10 laps to go when the leaders come by the flag stand this time around. And still out in front is Bliss in the green, or the green, the blue number six. The white and green 81 is Kenneth Nichols. He rides in second. And Jimmy Sills in the black and orange and all the colors of the rainbow. Number four rides in third. They go through a slower car, past a slower car, I should say. Traffic is not going to be a factor for them now. Now, Hedge is trying very, very hard, but he just can't quite make it. Look at how loose both these cars are. Both up running sideways, coming off the corner. <laughs> if, if Nichols just had a little bit more tire left, he could just go right on by, but they're both. And I think they both just about worn out their right rear tire. See right there, every time he gets down there, he pinches the car a little bit. The back end gets out, and it just slows it down so much he can't keep the momentum. Yeah, with the, great, with the great view is Sills. He can see exactly what's happening to the first two guys. They're burning off the right rear. Sills run pretty straight right now, and here he comes, taking a look to the inside. He may win this thing. Well, while they're racing each other, he might be in the best position, but he's also a little loose. You can see him sliding around. Right there, he tried to get down a little low. The back end came out. All three of these guys are running but they're still running faster than anybody on the racetrack. Nobody can catch them. Right Working on lap 43. We're about to complete lap 43. Seven laps to go. It's Bliss, Nichols, and Sills. One, two, and three. Kenneth Nichols is so frustrated. He knows he's faster. He just knows if I get in front, I can run away with him. But every time I have to go lower the racetrack, oh, look ahead. 
Minster. There he goes around Minster. He made it that time. Oh, look at Nichols. He did a little wiggle back there and went just a wiggle here at IRP as he pulled to the bottom. Oh, look at Sales as he hangs the rear end out. Hedger is up to fourth. I'll tell you what, I think Hedger's going to catch all four of them, but I don't know whether he can get around them, or all three of them, I mean. Well, he only has six laps to go. We talk about the difference in engines. Out in front is that Potter V6. Montana runs. rides second, a Gertie is in third, and a Volkswagen is in fourth. Look at all three of these front guys. Just watch them go through the corner here. Watch the back end of the race car. All three of them are tippy toeing that throttle. Just, just touching it ever so gingerly, trying to keep that back end under to save that tire. They know if they can keep their tire a little cooler than the guy in front of them, they might have a chance. And, but they still got to run fast enough to keep up. Here goes Kenneth Oh, both of them are, the chassis really upset through turn four. See, every time you get a little anxious, you think you got a shot to get around him. You get on the throttle just a little too hard, it turns that race car sideways. Three piece chassis running one, two, and three with three different power plants, so it's all going to come down not so much to chassis and engine, but to tire wear right now. How much right rear rubber you got left? It sure is. I'll tell you what, those guys are trying to run so hard, but at the same time trying to keep them as straight as possible. I'll tell you what, Kenneth Nichols is working his tail off and just can't quite get the job done. This is a good race car that's out in front, a good driver. Bliss comes in from Milwaukee, Oregon. He's staying here in the uh, Midwest in Indianapolis this racing season. Two laps to go. We'll see the white flag the next time by, so if you got something left, you better show it right now, but I don't think they have anything back. Nichols tries it every time coming off the corner. Oh, they have him a shot. They have him. Going have the him he's driving in there deep, but I'm out. Second and third place. The yellow flag is out. Second and third. Oh, recapitulate that. Oh, man, he just, he had a shot. This was going to be his best chance. He drove it in there just as deep as he dared, and it was just a little too far. The back end came out. He couldn't save it. He slid up in front of Sills, and that was all there was to it. Well, we'll take one more look. This is the battle for the lead. They go into turn three on the lap 49. Just a little too hard. He lost it a little bit. The front end went out. Tapped the left rear. Look, Bliss almost spun, too. And then he slid sideways. Sills went, well, too. Well, Sills had to climb on the brakes to avoid hitting Kenneth Nichols. And two and three are gone. We're going to have a shootout at Raceway Park. It will be a two-lap shootout because of this contact here. Nichols loses the car, and Sills climbs on the binders. There goes Nichols up toward the wall. Sills on the binders. He loses the rear end, but he kept the engine going. He kept the engine going with that clutch. I bet he's really thankful you sat and got those things, because now he's got a shot of winning this race. And look at Hedger in third place in that yellow car. He's moved right up on the tail. Look at Sills. There he goes on the inside. Can he do it? No, no he, he do couldn't it. do it. The white flag will come out this time by. One lap to go. Bill Carey shows him the white flag. All right. It's a one-lap shootout. This is going to be interesting. I don't think I don't think Hedger's got a chance now, but I think Sills, if he gets a good run off this corner, no, nope, he doesn't. He got two stars sideways. I think uh, that he cannot get the win right now. He got two cars sideways coming off of two, but he doesn't give up. He still heads for the inside, but this may give Hedger a chance on the outside. Mike Bliss will win the 48th edition of the night before the 500. Jimmy Sills comes home second, and third, Jim Hedger. So the Beast chassis with the V6 Chevrolet takes the victory. That is going to be a tough combination to beat this racing season. Mike Bliss out of Milwaukee, Oregon. He's off to a great start. Won the Silver Crown race thank at you, thank Phoenix you. at the Copper Classic back in February. And now he comes back and wins the most important major race of his career. Well, I'm sure that'll help cheer Ralph Potter up to see that, that race car in victory lane. And, and he did one heck of a job. I mean, everybody on the racetrack took a shot at him. He could have panicked. He could have jerked the wheel. He could have spun that race car. But he kept his cool. He drove it straight and he won the race. So Mike Bliss, his mom and dad are in from Oregon. Milwaukee, Oregon is uh, a suburb of Portland. They come back uh, every summer for the season, but he has decided to stay here all season long. We're going to take a look now at that last shot, the last shot that Jimmy Sills had in the uh, revolver. And he pulled the trigger right here, but it wasn't enough. He got a real good run on him. Look how much speed he's got coming off of two. He got a real good run down into three. He just drove it in there as deep as he dared, just about what Nichols did. But when he slid up, he did not hit. Uh, uh, he didn't hit him. He didn't hit the back end of Bliss. That made him keep the race car straight and enabled him to finish second in the race.
So our congratulations to Mike Bliss. Mike, in fact, was the fast qualifier this evening, started six and made uh, an early uh, way to the front. He wins the night before the 500, and there's the top five. We're back at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Yeah, we're going to talk to the winner in a moment. we got to talk to this guy because Kenneth Nichols took a terrific shot at the winner. We want to roll a piece of tape. We want you to kind of take a look at it with us. This is when you made your attempt with a lap and a half to go. Tell me what was going on here. Well, we'd been running real hard, and we had the tires pretty hot. And I filled and stuck his nose in. knew he was right there. I knew if I wasn't going to get it done, I needed to get busy. So we hauled her down in there, and we pushed just the button just a little bit too hard. It broke loose, and I didn't want to hit Mike. He ran clean all year, and so we took ourselves out, unfortunately. But thank God we didn't hit the fence, and we'll be back again. So you didn't make any contact with Mike. I couldn't tell from that angle. You didn't touch him. No, we didn't touch at all. So he ran me good and clean. That's just a terrific, terrific race. It's the night before the 500. All the tradition is frustrating and, and disappointing as it must be. It's still got to be really exciting to be that part of such an exciting race. It's definitely a heartbreaker to lose it, but we was right up there, so Lord willing, we'll get him next time. Congratulations on a great run at him. He came home with nothing tonight, but boy, he sure put on a terrific show. We're going to be back to talk to the man he missed, the man who won the race, Mike Bliss, right after this. Saturday Night Thunder has been brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Lights. Some great onboard camera shots tonight on Thunder from the CarQuest Auto Parts. People, for your nearest CarQuest dealer, give them a call, 1-800-492-PART. I want to say thank you to Captain Alan Burrows and the Family Channel Blimp. Did a great job in giving us the overhead view of tonight's racing. And when it was all done, the man who went to victory lane is Mike Bliss. What a terrific race it was. Hey, they all came up there and took their shot at you. You ended up on top. Tell, tell me about that last couple of laps. Well, when we had the, when Kenneth hit me, I, uh, I hope it was going to go green because I knew Kenneth. Wait, 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 wait. He said he didn't touch you. <laughs> uh, well, when, uh, when when the air slipped me there, the air off his front tire, uh, it got me a little sideways, and then I, I was hoping to go green because I knew it screwed him up. And then when we had the yellow, I just, I knew that last two laps, I was just going to run hard as I could until the tires burn up. Yeah, it looked like you guys were all pretty well out of tire. Everybody was sliding around. What's that like when you're skating that close to the edge and you know they're coming after you and there's a couple of laps to go? I knew I could get in real hard. I knew I wasn't getting off the corner very good. And as uh, long as I went in hard, they couldn't get underneath me sliding into me. And that's what Kenneth tried. And, and he slid up and just, you know, whatever, he tapped me a little bit and uh, got me sideways. But uh, I made my mind up I was going to do it for Ralph Potter tonight, my car owner, and he's in the hospital watching. I hope. And uh, I just made my mind up I was going to win tonight from right from the get-go, and everything worked out great. It was just a terrific get-well card. The 48th running of the night before the 500's got your name all over it. Congratulations, Mike Bliss. Thank you very much. Bless wins it here tonight for the final thoughts from Topside. Let's go to Gary and Larry. Larry, Mike gets the trophy and the prize money, but you have to tip your hat to a bunch of guys because we had some great competition all the way back through the pack. Oh, we sure did. Sills, Hettinger, Mitchner, Irwin, and Kenneth Nichols all gave it a heck of a shot. They all did a fantastic job. They gave me a heck of a thrill. When it all came down to the last minute, it was uh, Bliss that won the trophy. A lot of thrills coming up June the 19th because you know what's coming up then, don't you, Dave? Yeah, I heard there was one more race left this weekend. Well, I hope it's as exciting <laughs> as the one that happened right here tonight. We were talking about the one, though, coming up in about three weeks on June the 19th when we debut the Fast Masters with the XJ220 Jags. Oh, I'll tell you what, that is going to be spectacular. We're going to be here to cover it all live. That race I was talking about, Indy 500, happens tomorrow. You can call the winner on Monday on Speed Week, special edition, and we hope you'll tune in for that. We offer our sincere congratulations on a great run to victory tonight for Mike Bliss. This one had history all over it. It was a good one. For Gary and Larry, I'm Dave Despain. Thanks much for being here. We're going to wrap up this month of May in our ESPN coverage of the 1993 Indy 500 preliminary. We'll see you for 